subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lepakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 14th of February. People vote for assembly polls in Indian states of Goa, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh. Massive protest erupt in Gilgit, Baltistan against land grabbing by non-local investors. And former President Karzai says U.S. order on frozen funds atrocity against Afghans. And now for all the details. The people of India's tourist hotspot of Goa and hill state of Uttarakhand cast their votes in the single phase of assembly elections on Monday, while the most populous Uttar Pradesh state held the second phase of polling. Keeping power in all the three states is crucial for the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party as the election results are being seen as a barometer for national elections due in 2024. The people of India's tourist hotspot Western Goa state and the northern hill state of Uttarakhand voted in the single phase of assembly elections on Monday, while most populous Uttar Pradesh state held the second phase of votes. Keeping power in all the three states is crucial for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling party Janta Party, as it would give it a boost in its bid for a third successive victory at the nationwide parliamentary polls due by 2024. In Goa, it faces challenge by the Congress and the Ahmadmi Party in a multi-cornered electoral contest. बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है कि मैंने पहले एक खूब सालों की मेरी तमन्ना थी कि मैं कब से पहले आउट करूं लेकिन इस साल मुझे चांस मिल गया मैं छह बजे उठ गया कि पहले आउट करने के लिए और बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है। Voters in Uttarakhand said they were voting over development issues amid BJP's criticism by the opposition over rising inflation, high unemployment and its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic nationwide. मुद्दा हमारी यह है कि हमारी जो शिक्षा नीति है वो होता है कि उसमें काफी टीचर्स मतलब बेसिक जो है हमारा वो टीचर्स है तो टीचर्स होनी चाहिए और बेरोजगारी हो गई है बहुत ज्यादा और क्या कहते हैं महिलाओं की सुरक्षा ये सब हमारे लिए बहुत जरूरी है while polling was held in a single phase in Goa and Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh will vote in a total of seven phases. Ending on March 7, counting of votes will begin on March 10, with the results expected soon after. And India on Monday paid tributes to the 40 paramilitary CRPF personnel who lost their lives in the Pulwama terror attack on February 14, 2019. On this day, three years ago, a suicide bomber of Pakistan-based Jaish-e Mohammed terror group rammed a vehicle carrying an explosive into the CRPF convoy in northern Pulwama, killing 40 personnel. On the third anniversary of the Pulwama terror attack, India's paramilitary CRPF the Central Reserve Police Force paid tributes to 40 of its soldiers who lost their lives in the attack at the war memorial in northern Jammu and Kashmir, Slathpora. Additional Director General of CRPF, D.S. Chaudhary, led the officers and soldiers of the CRPF in paying their tributes at the memorial. As a mark of respect, names of the martyred soldiers are engraved at the memorial. The attack on the CRPF convoy took place in Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama district in which 40 personnel were killed. A suicide bomber of Pakistan-based Jashi Mohammed or JEM terror group had rammed an explosive-laden vehicle into the bus. The convoy had 78 buses in which around 2,500 personnel were travelling from Jammu to Srinagar. उन वीर जवानों के याद में उनके सेक्रिफाइस जो उनका त्याग था उसको याद करके हम यहाँ एकत्रित होते हैं और उनकी उनको अपनी दिल से श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित करते हैं। Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid homage to the CRPF. Taking to Twitter, he said that bravery and supreme sacrifice of the martyrs motivate every Indian to work towards a strong and prosperous country. 
Days after the Pulwama attack, the Indian Air Force on February 26 carried out multiple aerial strikes at JM terror camps in Pakistan's Balakot, killing a large number of terrorists and destroying their infrastructure. And in news from Pakistan, opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif approached a government ally, PMLQ, on Sunday after 14 long years to seek its support to oust Prime Minister Imran Khan. This comes as the Pakistan's opposition parties have decided to introduce a no-trust motion in the parliament and take out anti-government long march rallies over rising inflation. Leader of the opposition in Pakistan's National Assembly and PMLN President Shehbaz Sharif met PMLQ's Chaudhry Shujat Hussain and Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi, allies of the PTI-led government at their residence after 14 years, as the opposition seeks to mount pressure on Prime Minister Imran Khan. PMLN in a statement on Twitter said, both sides discuss the current political situation in the country in detail and other issues of mutual interest. Reports suggest Chaudhry brothers have sought time to respond as Shehbaz urged support for a no-confidence motion to oust the government. Shehbaz had earlier last week held a meeting with leaders of another government ally MQMP for support. Multi-party opposition alliance PDM Pakistan Democratic Movement's chief Mulana Fazlur Rahman had also met the Chaudhry brothers last week. The development comes as the opposition parties have also decided to carry out anti-government long march rallies over rising inflation on February 27 and on March 23. Moving on, passive protests were held by locals and activists in Gilgit, Baltistan on Sunday over an ongoing land acquisition by non-local investors who are plundering natural resources of the region. The protesters alleged it is a part of Pakistan's deliberate attempts at expanding its political control over the illegally occupied territory. Locals and activists in Gilgit, Baldistan recently held massive protests over ongoing land acquisition by non-local investors whom they alleged are grabbing several acres of lands in a bid to change the demography of the illegally occupied region. The protesters voice their concern over recent appropriation of their lands for marble mining by the government in Nasirabad and threats by Secretary of Mining Department of carrying out military operations against any resistance. There has been continuous dissent in Gilgit Baldistan against the existing land laws which allow government ownership over old barren land. I think it's uh, high time that the world should take notice of this because Pakistani occupied Gilgit Baltistan is not Pakistan territory, it's a disputed area. It is an area illegally occupied by Pakistan since 1947. It belongs to India and obviously it belongs to the people of Gilgit Baltistan. So how on earth is this uh, plundering of our lands being taking place and nobody is taking notice? Locals accuse the Pakistan government has been providing a no-objection certificate to so-called investors who are actually land mafias as part of its vigorous attempts at expanding its political control over the disrupted territory. They say for the last 74 years, the ruling classes of Pakistan have imposed a colonial and bureaucratic rule on Gilgit Baldistan. And U.S. President Biden signed an executive order last week to freeze 7 billion U.S. dollars out of more than 9 billion frozen Afghan assets, splitting the money between humanitarian aid for cash-strapped Afghanistan and a fund for 9-11 victims. In reaction to that, former Afghan President Hamid Karzai has said that seizing money from the people of Afghanistan is unjust and an atrocity against Afghans. <laughs> Seizing money from the people of Afghanistan is unjust and an atrocity against Afghan people, said former Afghan President Hamid Karzai on Sunday as he urged the United States to return his country's assets. The United States, following its forces' exit from Afghanistan in August 2021, has frozen more than 9 billion US dollars of assets of Afghanistan's central bank. The move is widely seen as the major factor leading to the current economic crisis in the war-torn Asian country. U.S. President Joe Biden signed an executive order on Friday 
to free 7 billion US dollars out of more than 9 billion frozen Afghan assets, splitting the money between humanitarian aid for cash-strapped Afghanistan and a fund for 9-11 victims. While addressing a press conference in Kabul, Karzai noted that the Afghan people share the grief of the Americans who have suffered due to the 9-11 terrorist attacks, stressing that his fellow citizens should not be denied what is rightfully theirs. Withholding money or seizing money from the people of Afghanistan in that name is, uh, is unjust and unfair. But this money belongs to the, to the people of Afghanistan. This money does not belong to any government. But that's not the money of my government, nor the government that came after me, of Dr. Ashravani, nor the government today. I request uh, President Joe Biden uh, to return the Afghan money back to the Afghan people. Last week, Mohammad Naeem, a spokesman of the Taliban political office in Qatar, tweeted that stealing the blocked funds of Afghan nation by the United States and its seizure is indicative of the lowest level of human and moral decay of a country and a nation. The Afghan Central Bank on Sunday issued a statement saying the US government's latest decision of splitting frozen Afghan assets is an injustice to the people of Afghanistan. And as COVID-19 cases have begun to decline in Nepal, the Himalayan nation reopened schools on Sunday after a month of holding virtual classes. The government imposed tough restrictions last month as coronavirus cases broke records, fueled by the Omicron variant. Nepal reopened schools on Sunday after a month of virtual classes amid a weakening third wave of COVID infection fueled by the Omicron variant. The local district administration last week had permitted educational institutions and businesses such as hotels, restaurants and movie theatres to reopen from Sunday, adhering to health and safety protocols. After a month of virtual teaching learning practice, students in capital Kathmandu welcomed the move. Though the pandemic restrictions have been relaxed, the COVID-19 Health Crisis Management Coordination Center, CCMCC, have made the safety protocol mandatory. It had recommended the Interior Ministry and the Education Ministry for the arrangement of regular school classes for students above 12 years and on alternate days for those under 12 years. Schools and educational institutions of Nepal were closed last year in wake of rising infection due to coronavirus. First to report COVID-19 cases in entire South Asia in early 2020, Nepal till date has reported 973,059 cases with 938,583 recoveries and 11,892 deaths. And in a bid to promote adventure sports, authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir are training young enthusiasts in advanced skiing in the famous winter ski resort of Gulmarg. The sport is also witnessing renewed interest with the participation of Kashmiri skier Arif Khan in the ongoing Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. The Indian Institute of Skiing and Mountaineering or IISM is training the youths in various adventure sports including skiing in winter sports hub of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Skiers were recently seen hitting the slopes enthusiastically. The state-of-the-art adventure school offers basic and advanced courses in skiing, rock climbing, aerosports, trekking, mountaineering and water skiing among others. The organizers said they also prepare the best students for national and international level competitions. Adventure ke lag -lag type ke courses karte hain. Winter mein basically skiing ke upar emphasis diya jata hai. तो विंटर में हम सिक्स कोर्सेज दो हफ्ते के हर कोर्स होता है सिक्स कोर्सेज करते हैं उसमें बेसिक भी होता है एडवांस भी होता है इंटरमीडिएट कोर्स भी होता है जिसमें ऑल ओवर कंट्री के स्टूडेंट जो है आके पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं द रीसेंट पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ कश्मीरी स्कीयर अरिफ खान इंडियाज लोन एथलीट एट द बीजिंग 2022 विंटर ओलंपिक्स 
has come as another big milestone for skiing enthusiasts in Kashmir Valley. Arif Khan on Sunday finished 45th out of 89 participants in the men's giant slalom event. Apart from skiing, Gulmark is also popular for snowboarding, skating, sledge rides, gondola jaunts and cable car rides. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.